All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this early morning uh, press conference here in Davos. Um, we're very proud to present to you uh, where uh, we've arrived uh, to this stage with uh, our innovation platform, our SDG innovation platform, Uplink. I'm Olivia Schwab. I am in charge of digital innovation at the World Economic Forum. Uplink is a platform that we launched in 2020 with the idea of enabling impact entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that are active in the SDG space, um, to scale, to have access to capital, uh, to have access uh, uh, to an ecosystem which allows them to, to grow and to scale. To date, um, we've raised 37 million uh, uh, Swiss francs through the platform since 2020. And I'm joined here by uh, some of the founding partners and funding partners of the Uplink project. And um, we'll uh, um, describe a little bit uh, um, what the future, vi where we've arrived and what the future uh, vision for, uh, for, for Uplink is. We're also very proud uh, to announce that we're launching our impact report here at the annual meeting. And uh, we'll go over that um, after we've heard from the speakers, and I'll, I'll mention some of the highlights. Um, but first, we have on the panel Suzanne DiBianca, Chief Impact Officer of Salesforce. You're one of the early partners in this adventure. Uh, Kwesi Mitchell, Global Chief Purpose and DI Officer Deloitte, equally engaged since the beginning in uh, this Uplink adventure. Uh, Nidhi Pant, co-founder S4S Technologies. You're one of the impact entrepreneurs. Sarah Chapman, Chief Sustainability Officer, Manulife. And uh, Sundar Mahalingam, President Strategy, HCL, both HCL and, and Manulife, uh, some uh, of the funding uh, partners of Uplink. Um, so maybe I'll, um, I'll, start with, uh, I'll start with you, um, uh, Suzanne. Um, you know, um, oops, sorry, I'll start with you, Suzanne. <laughs> You're one of the funding partners of Uplink. How do you see Uplink evolving in the future? And specifically, um, you know, why did Salesforce get involved in, in the first place? And we hear uh, Mark talking of an ecopreneur revolution. So can you tell us what that is? Sure, and thank you, Olivier, uh, for having me here today. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of the work of Uplink over the last four years. And, um, you know, like you, we saw this need, these, these incredible people uh, all over Davos, but really that we came across throughout the whole year. And uh, connecting them to each other uh, was critical, and we saw a real opportunity with the forum to build a platform which connected all the stakeholders from governments to NGOs to venture investors to corporates, et cetera. And so, um, you know, that's really why we got engaged. And the ecopreneur revolution um, is really what we're seeing incredible entrepreneurs, of which you'll hear from um, some today, and hopefully uh, you've heard from some throughout the week, and will continue to, really driving change, um, climate change in particular, through uh, incredible solutions uh, and innovation. So I'm really excited and impressed. I had a, a dinner with 20 innovators last night, and it was probably my favorite event of the week, um, to really just see the power and energy that's happening. Um, just a little context from Salesforce. So we had the opportunity to um, found Uplink um, along with our partners Deloitte and WEF about four years ago. Uh, we've given over 10 million in in-kind and cash contributions to the effort. In terms of where we're going, I'm really excited um, about a recent grant that we've given, which includes um, the opportunity to expand through venture partners. And you know, we see investors who are looking for you know, great entrepreneurs, of which Uplink has become one of the best platforms um, to source some of those deals for them. So incredibly excited uh, to get the venture community engaged, the impact investment community in particular. And we've also uh, 
supported nine of the uplink challenges. Everything from nature and trees to oceans and blue carbon. Um, the Trillion Tree Challenge, which is something that is very close to my heart. There's a number of innovators here in that space. Uh, Rebecca Braswell, who founded an organization called Land Life, working to restore degraded lands. And uh, Diego uh, Saez, who's the founder of Pachama and a good friend of mine, who's using remote sensing technology and AI uh, to monitor these forest projects are just a few examples of some of the ecopreneurs that are here this week at Davos. Um, and I'll just say yesterday here at Davos, we announced the Sustainable Aviation Fuel Challenge in partnership with the First Movers Coalition and uh, John Kerry's effort to bring together stakeholders to take a couple key areas and drive change. Um, you know, air travel represents 2% of global greenhouse gas emissions, and we really need to innovate in that space. So the challenge was really a partnership between industry leaders like Airbus and Breakthrough Energy, and Boom, super, Supersonic, Deloitte, of course, was at the table, JetBlue, Qantas, etc. cetera. Um, and we've got some great entrepreneurs here, I would just say, to look out for. Uh, one being an organization called Intertech, uh, which is building in Frankfurt, uh, the world's largest production plant of e-fuels um, in the future. And another example is Beyond Aero, which is a small aircraft, uh, and it's designed to reach um, short-term range at w while emitting zero uh, carbon at all. And then the last thing I'll say is we are ex very excited tomorrow uh, to bring something that we call the dream pitch here to Davos, which is think of it sort of like a shark tank for climate. And so we've got great judges, we've got incredible entrepreneurs that'll be there tomorrow. So we invite you to join us for that in the SDG chat in the morning. Thank you, Suzanne. And you really underscore sort of one of the key aspects of Uplink, which is to bring together early stage entrepreneurs with great ideas and technologies with big established players looking at massive systemic challenges like sustainable aviation fuel. So fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to turn to uh, Kwesi uh, from Deloitte. You've been with us since the beginning as well. And uh, Deloitte's very much active in um, uh, building sustainable and equitable cities. And you've worked uh, on the YesFS challenge um, for the city of San Francisco. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how Uplink was conducive to, um, uh, to, that, um, to, uh, to that initiative? Of course, and, and as Suzanne said in her phenomenal comments, really, we saw Uplink as a platform for driving collective action. So not only is it do you have phenomenal partners such as Salesforce and others, but you're also in a position where you get to meet great entrepreneurs and innovators and simultaneously are, have this phenomenal means by which you can engage different parts of other communities. So from a collective action standpoint, as we looked across you know, our recovery post the pandemic, we wanted to do something truly unique. And that was, let's have a place-based challenge um, the first of its kind with respect to Uplink in the city of San Francisco, a city that's near and dear to so many of us, as I know it is to you, Suzanne, and Salesforce more broadly, but looking at such a great city and how can we bring innovation back downtown and focus on sustainable solutions that can be provided and, and really scaled. And so what was beautiful about what took place with respect to YesSF was not only the sourcing of the innovations, but a collection and a community that we built around the innovators. You know, not only with collaborators such as Salesforce, you know, obviously the WEF, um, in addition to that city, and also the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. So collectively, you bring these anchor partners together and also add to that over 20 other collaborators simultaneously, puts you in a phenomenal position to create an environment around these innovators to truly bring in innovative and economic growth back to downtown San Francisco. Now, what has us truly excited is about the success that we've had thus far, that now that we're in a position to move forward with another two-year commitment to expand the work that we've done at yes, with the SSF, continue our journey with respect to San Francisco, and really determine if there is a playbook at which we can take 
sustainable solutions and really drive urban transformation in so many other cities, not only within the US, but around the world. So without Uplink and the ability of this platform to bring so many great things together, I cannot think of any other way that this truly would have been possible. Fantastic. And we certainly hope to scale that model as we go forward. Um, Nidhi, I'm going to turn to you. You're the founder of S4S one of our entrepreneurs here on the panel. Can you tell, you, can you tell us a little bit what you're, uh, what you're doing and how um, you expect to benefit from this platform, which is Uplink? Yes, S4S stands for Science for Society. Work, we work at this intersection of agriculture, energy access, and gender. Untimely rains, heat waves is causing 25 to 30% of total produce of smallholder farmers to be of lower grade. This lower grade produce gets lower price in the market. It's just cosmetically damaged, but nutritionally intact. So at S4S, we convert this imperfect, ugly produce to value added products, to food ingredients, by helping smallholder farmers become processors. So we help them create small farm factories so that they can process this produce. Uh, this is completely solar powered. So if we first give them the right technology, these could be dehydrators, grain millers, biomass-based uh, milk evaporators. Uh, we then also, whatever they make, do quality assurance and collect it to large off-takers like food MNC companies like Nestle, Sodexo, et cetera. So in this way, our impact is uh, th in three ways, which is first, we prevent the food from getting wasted. We help farmers earn an assured additional income. It doubles down their household income. And also, we democratize food processing for smallholder farmers by uh, giving them uh, the right technology. Uh, platforms like Uplink has been very catalytic to our growth. Uh, when we were part of the Uplink network, we were working with 1,000 uh, farmers. Today, we work with 300,000 farmers. Uh, we were a 50-member team. Today, we are a 200-member team. And we got a great community. We uh, to, uh, with a fellow uh, entrepreneurs, we were. It was. It was very challenging for us to work with large food companies, but there was someone who was already working, so we got the right connection. We got also great funding opportunities, so we have also raised more than ten million dollars in uh, in capital. Also, as an entrepreneur, we feel a lot more confident because we can rely on uplink for everything, whether it is our go-to market, our funding, or any organizational development needs. So it's been really very catalytic in our growth. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to turn to, uh, to Sarah. Sarah, you, you're starting your second uh, challenge with Uplink. The first one was on the forest economy. And now uh, you're tackling the topic of longevity. So we're going from um, sort of climate and nature to health. Of course, uh, everything is interconnected. But can you tell us a little bit what you what your expectations are and why innovation in this space is important. Absolutely, and let me just say, Nindy is the reason, a great example of the reason that we are all here. Um, it is this type of entrepreneurship and innovative ideas that you know at Manulife we are all in to, to engage on. So uh, for Manulife, I'll talk briefly about the two challenges that we, that we ran this year. We are the largest institutional manager of Timberland in the world. And so for us, we are at the front row of the devastating impacts of biodiversity and nature loss in our asset classes that we're seeing. So we ran two challenges this, uh, this past year in 2023 uh, and sourced ultimately 21 uh, incredible forest-based solutions. Things like harvesting with drones, um, woodland rob uh, robots, uh, as well as interesting detoxifying wood treatments. So uh, a phenomenal example of, um, again, innovative solutions that frankly we need for our business and the asset classes and the investments uh, you know, that, that Manulife is making in uh, forest-based solutions. As we think about human health and longevity, we know that people are living longer, and yet they're living less years in good health. That is an absolutely critical issue for us as a global life and health insurance company. And so this multi-year, uh, multi-million dollar commitment and partnership with Uplink is really designed to help shape the future of health, thinking about longevity at the center of, frankly, both the health for our planet and the health for people. Um, 
it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge, um, again, from a longevity perspective, um, that the forum has released the Longevity Economy Principles Report uh, released earlier this week that, again, is the sort of, again, the principles that stand behind why longevity, uh, and again, the uplink connection here being the critical innovations that we know are going to be needed to address this issue that we have moving forward. So we're pleased to be involved. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Sundar, HCL was uh, also involved from the from the very beginning, um, looking at uh, uh, let's call them aquapreneurs, entrepreneurs involved in the water space. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, where we are today since we started a few years ago, and uh, and where you see this uh, this going? Thanks, Olivier, and thank you for uh, having me here. So again, just quick context. So at HCL, we decided to look at the water space. I think it's um, it's something which is very important, but not so much part of the of the conversation. So we felt it was important. And when we looked at the space, it was important to look at the entrepreneurs in the space and see what we can do to help them. So one of the key reasons we looked at Uplink, and it's been a very nice journey, is the key part of the water challenge is the fact that it's a very local problem. So when you're looking at solutions for the globe, you need to look at global solutions. So Uplink is a place where you could, and I mean, the first challenge had out of, we had chose 10 people, and they came from eight different countries. So I mean, there's no better way of talking about globalization than a challenge like Uplink. The second thing that, uh, say, Uplink gave our people, or was giving our people, our entrepreneurs, is uh, the access, right? And Nidhi, is, for example, is here, I mean, and she's mentioned how she's grown. So this is access, and she's got visibility, people are seeing her. So that's a fabulous value that I think this brings along. Uh, and finally, um, um, you know, uh, there lots of people, there's a fair amount of uh, investments that come in. And I understand, we did the entrepreneur challenge last year, and uh, we chose 10 entrepreneurs. Um, that they have raised about $55 million in, um, in grants and venture capital in the last one year itself. So it speaks volumes of the power that are uh, uh, a platform like Uplink can bring. And so we're very happy with this. Uh, this. Thank you, John, Olivia, and all of you. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, the, I mean, this is certainly one of the, the effects as well, is uh, to give these entrepreneurs visibility. And uh, we've had millions of, of, of venture capital flow into them as a, as a result of that. We're very proud to um, announce our annual impact report. Um, and you, I'll, I'll let you go uh, through it. It's available. Um, but just a few data points um, that are in the report. In the realm of nature-based solutions, uplink innovators have collectively uh, managed uh, the restoration of over, uh, well, almost 500,000 uh, hectares of land. Uh, across oceans, over 23,000 metric tons of marine waste was connect collected, and then over 10,000 metric tons of, uh, of waste uh, collected um, uh, on, on land by some of the uh, innovators. And then uh, the aquapreneurs, which we just mentioned, have collectively treated over 350 million liters of wastewater. So it's really about bringing um, visibility and capital to those entrepreneurs which are very local, uh, as you said, Sundar, which are doing the work on the ground. And um, we're uh, definitely hoping to scale that. Today, only 5% of uh, impact investing goes to early stage entrepreneurs. But that's where we see a tremendous opportunity. And so we're very excited to continue on this journey. We're very excited to announce where we've arrived since 2022, where this was just uh, an idea. And I'd like to thank uh, our partners and, and our entrepreneurs on, on the panel. Um, we have time for some questions. If you, if you have any, please stay on the topic. And okay, no questions. In that case, we can close the, the session. Thank you very much.